One often unseen cause of air pollution is shipping. The enormous cargo vessels which crisscross the world produce enormous amounts of sulphur and nitrous oxides, as well as particulate matter. By some calculations, one large container ship can produce the equivalent of tens of millions of cars worth of these pollutants. But it's a field where much more measurement is needed to truly understand the scale of the problem and what can be done. Paul Carter has been to Denmark to investigate how authorities there are using tech to better understand shipping and the pollution it causes. This sleepy, remote part of Denmark may not look like it's at the cutting edge of emissions detection and enforcement. But looks can be deceiving. The Danish Maritime Authority, in partnership with the European Maritime Safety Agency, are using drones like this one as the latest weapon to detect and identify ships that are breaching EU regulations on emissions. This aircraft is equipped with a range of detectors and sensors, as well as 360 and infrared cameras to identify ships and effectively sniff their emissions by flying through the plume of smoke they leave behind. I'm stood in the takeoff and landing zone for the drone that they use here, or RPAS to actually give it its correct term. It's out behind me somewhere, finding a ship to uh, sniff, for want of a better term. And I'm not sure if our camera can actually pick it up, but along the horizon there's a, a yellow band, which is actually the pollution that you can see that these ships are emitting. And if you can imagine what it was like before these regulations came in, and that's exactly what this aircraft is trying to detect. So this is a very innovative uh, project. Uh, to protect the environment. Uh, how does it work? What we try to do is to take as many measurements as possible of the sulfur content of the plume of the vessels. And uh, this type of drone uh, is uh, adding uh, uh, a proof of uh, their infringement. Because uh, up to now what happened uh, sometimes is that uh, they were changing fuel just when entering the port. Uh, so this uh, type of drone allows us to also take measurements while they, they sail. Now it's going to be coming back into land soon and to be honest I don't really want to be stood here when it does so I'm going to make a sharp exit. It's piloted by two people from a ground-based control centre, one flying and one monitoring the payload, as well as a team of ground-based engineers and observers. What's it like to fly one of these? <laughs> uh, it's uh, quite good fun, uh, it's different. I used to fly helicopters uh, so it's very different from in that perspective, but is in many ways as well, there's many similarity. The uh, drones react the same way as a helicopter would do, so then I can use my experience as a helicopter pilot in this type of industry. And it's uh, nice to be able to do something for the environment as well. We can see the one is polluting a lot, and then you can see the black smoke, but most of the time you don't see it, also because of the wind pushing it down or pushing it sideways, you might not be able to see it. But we have also an extra tool like a IR camera to be able to see it. It might help us uh, sometimes as well. So we have a sensor which monitors the CO2 and the NO2. And we also have the payload camera which uh, you use to be able to see where you're going. The RPAS, or Remotely Piloted Aircraft System, is detecting for a range of pollutants. All the data recorded during each flight is shared directly with the host member state and also with EMSA. Basically now we can uh, extend our reach by a huge margin by, uh, by flying these drones over the ships, collecting samples of the, um, the emissions and uh, then calculate back to how much sulfur is in the fuel. Are they breaking the rules or are they not? Then we can follow that up with, uh, with actual inspections on board when the, uh, when the ship comes into port. And here it comes now, it's just coming into land. You can see it swooping around slightly just to ac accommodate for the wind. It's quite bizarre to think that you know, even just a couple of minutes ago, that was a, a speck out there on the horizon. It's been out there for the last hour, hour and a half, inspecting any ships that it's come across. And now it's coming back into land for a well-earned rest. We are uh, sort of uh, first movers with, uh, with this type of technology used in this way. But um, as it gets easier, as the regulation uh, behind it matures, then I think that, um, that uh, we will see this uh, all over the place and it's not just for sulfur emissions so you could uh, monitor many things and see because that's really uh, what we're trying to do we're trying to to extend our reach where can we go and uh, and enforce the rules that we are 
trying to enforce. Denmark are the first EU member state to use this technology, but as regulations and legislation continue to emerge, soon no ship will be safe from similar sulphur sniffers.